Okay, well, welcome to the June um, session of the ITB2 Transmart Foundation training program. Um, as usual, this session will be recorded uh, and the slides available on the website of the foundation uh, within uh, during this next this week. week. Um, today, uh, we're happy to have Peter Rice from Axiomatics join us to talk about Transmart version 19, formerly called 16.4. Uh, and Peter will go through um, the uh, the contents of the release and uh, you know, a little bit about the history and how we got there. Uh, this is part of our overall training program uh, that we run throughout the year. Uh, there are a uh, number of other sessions planned uh, for the rest of the year, and uh, we hope you'll, uh, you'll consider some of the other classes as we uh, get going. Okay, so uh, I think we'll just get back right over to Peter and get started with the session. Um, Peter? Thanks very much. So we promised an update on Transmart 16.4, and as Rudy hinted, the first update is that we've renamed it to Transmart 19. So uh, we're harmonizing the various releases across uh, the platforms, as I'll, I'll come into. And so it makes sense to have release 19 as the year number for this new release. But it is what we've always been calling 16.4 up to now as a, a working title. I'll cover some of the background to why we need a, a new Transmart release and how it fits into the other platforms. I'll go into a, a quick overview of Transmart for anyone on the call or anyone listening to the recording who's not familiar with Transmart, just to, to introduce the, the basic features. Then I'll go into what's new in this release and uh, the effort that's going into building it. OK, thanks, Rudy. Next slide. So Transmart started off as a, a branch of the I2B2 platform, which handles clinical data. You can have large numbers of patients stored in there and select um, patients for clinical trials according to their uh, um, diseases they might have or any other characteristics. Um, but this is extended to cope with um, clinical studies. So you can take a clinical trial, select an entire study, take the expression data, any other data that you've got for that study, and then do increased analysis on it. So that was uh, originally just for Oracle, and it was originally a commercial product. Um, but after a couple of years, it was released as open source. And so for the last six years, uh, last seven years, it's been an open source platform coordinated by the Transmart Foundation, which was formed almost as soon as it became open source developed by developers from pharmaceutical industry, from academia, and from some major European projects which were using it to handle their clinical trial data. One of the first things that happened was support for Postgres was added. So Transmart supports Oracle and Postgres, and generally Postgres is the, the preferred platform. Um, we had many, many branches that had come out of all the various companies and projects that worked on it, and we merged all of those together into one project, which we called 16.1. We added a lot of new features, which again came from the pharmaceutical industry and the other companies, and 16.2 uh, and 16.3, and that's where we are currently. And now we're doing a, a major overhaul to get into version 19. <coughs> so meanwhile, there's this um, ITB2 has continued developing, and there's an ITB2 foundation that was looking after it. That's now merged, so we have one ITB2 Transmot Foundation that covers everything. The very latest ITP2 version is finally open source. It was under a rather closed source license before. And at Harvard Medical School, there's a group that's been using Transmart and I2B2 together. They were originally in a uh, um, hospital in Paris, and they moved to Harvard, and they've carried on working with both sets of software, um, which they could do because they were at Harvard and they didn't have licensing problems, and used it for a bunch of local projects. But now that ITB2 is becoming open source, um, they've been updating that, and they've been feeding a lot of their changes back into uh, the Transmart code. This year, um, last month, they released ITB2 Transmart 19.1, which is their version of Transmart plus ITB2 running on a common database with various new features. Currently, it only supports Oracle because that's all they use in Harvard, um, but it's not far off supporting Postgres as well. 
and they're, they're merging in the open source ITB2 for their next version, and they want Transmart to be the same version in Transmart as it is in their platform. So we're working on that and providing a Transmart that gives them what they, what they need and adding various new features at the same time. Next slide. So this is the, the welcome screen to Transmart. It uh, comes up with a, a set of, on the left you see a set of, um, they're called programs, diseases or some other top level classification for the data. You have a set of tabs along the top. The analyzed tab is where most of the work is done. So next slide. We'll take a look at some of the analysis options you can do. On the left, you see all of the studies opened up so you can see some of the clinical data. Um, may or may not be fully visible. Get down to, um, so there's biomarker data or expression data from lung tissue. There's some diagnosis information, information about the subjects. You generally have race, um, sex, age for various for each of the subjects and whatever other properties the trial was measuring for each of the subjects. You can set up two, sub two subsets of these data for comparison. And so you drag various um, terms from the tree on the left in to create subsets. And in I2B2, that's a lot of what you do is you're creating subsets of patients with a large number of patients and they're aiming to identify patients to contact for trials. What we're looking at here is taking patients from a, a completed trial and analyzing the data that we've got for those patients. So next slide. So here we just see a summary, um, age range and and sex for a set of patients that we've selected um, to show that the ages are reasonably balanced, the sexes are reasonably balanced, and we can do a comparison of the other properties. Next slide, Rudy. And so there's a bunch of analyses we can do. So this is um, in the advanced workflows. You have a set of, I think, 15 analyses that you can run various heat maps, box plots, line graphs, and some other more detailed analyses. Uh, you can select one of those and put some answer, put some parameters in. Next slide. So we select a box plot and we get a, a box plot out here. That's the original analyses that were in uh, Transmart 16.1. In 16.2, we introduced a new um, option called Smart R to do the analysis, which gives you a much more interactive results. And that's shown on the next slide. So this isn't just in color, but you can see that various values have been highlighted as you mouse over. And it's it's possible to get much more out of it with Smart R, but it doesn't support the full set of analyses. So we leave the old version in there as well uh, to do the things that Smart R doesn't cover yet. It may be that for Transmart 19, we can cover some more of those in Smart R. We'll look into that. Next slide. So you can also generate heat maps from the expression data. Uh, in this case, looking at uh, most significant markers. Um, and this is the Smart R version. Again, you can mouse over the, the cells in the heat map and see information about uh, the underlying data. Next slide. And you can also drag expression data into the query boxes and you can query by gene expression. So you can take a particular gene and select those individuals where the gene is most highly expressed or less highly expressed or within some range and compare those to, to another set and then look at what other properties um, are significant for those two subsets of patients. So in this case, you just select a gene. It gives you a range of uh, expression. You select a range with the slide bar uh, in this case, we're selecting the lower range. Next slide. And so you can get a graph. Um, the graph in bottom right shows the expression of this gene different in the two sets that we've picked up here. Um, I, that's significant because we've selected the low and high levels of, for that gene, I think, in these two sets. And the next slide should show, yes, you can get a tabular view out as well of your data so you see the the patient anonymized identifiers, um, sample codes, a set of standard things, um, age, sex, and race, if available. And we're also seeing the expression data in this table because we've selected it. You can also drag other fields across and select those and look at them. So you can analyze your data in this view, and then you can select 
some of this to be exported. Uh, next slide. So here we have the data export page and you can export the clinical data or you can ex export the expression data and you can do it for selected patients from your subsets and you can add some extra columns to the data by just dragging them in and they'll be included in the, the data that you extract. Um, it's also possible to secure your instance so you can ban people from doing the export and looking at data if it's particularly sensitive. You haven't anonymized it, for example. So these settings are in, in Transmart already. Okay, so that's an overview of what Transmart gives you. We'll have a look at uh, what we've been doing with the new release. So the first thing that's been happening is that uh, we're doing a major upgrade to support ITB2 Transmart. We're putting in um, some bug fixes and changes that we've been making anyway since 16.3. But the big thing is the code updates that came from the ITB2 Transmart project. They didn't just put in the features that they've been using for the last six years, um, but they've also put in a major effort to clean up the code. So it's been commercial code for a while, then it's been open source for six years, but nobody's really done a code cleanup. And they had an um, author of one of the O'Reilly books on Grails who um, went through the code and did a major effort to standardize it. It's going to make it much more robust, but it does mean we have to check every feature because all the code has changed. Uh, we're supporting most recent versions of Postgres, so they've been numbering Postgres 8 point something, 9 point something. It's now numbered 10, 11 upwards. So Postgres numbers would increase more rapidly. It doesn't mean there have been that many more changes necessarily. We're supporting the latest Ubuntu release, Ubuntu 18. We also support 16 and it should run on 14 as well. But I won't be going back to, to test it on there. Uh, a major code review and cleanup, partly done by um, the Harvard guys and partly done since then on the, the code they weren't looking at. They're adding a new authentication system so you'll be able to have a single authentication using Auth0 um, and that maps onto your, your rights and your user IDs within Transmart. But you can use existing methods so some companies use LDAP, some people just have the username password stored in Transmart which is the default. There's a new analysis methods, that's three ways to run the analysis workflows from the author of Smart R. So he's replacing Smart R with something called Fractalis, which has a more efficient way to gather the data and do the analysis. But we'll continue to support the other workflows for those who've been using them. And because some of the functionality isn't available in the latest um, Fractalis or even in Smart R yet. We're adding data loading capabilities. I'll go into those. And we've done a cleanup of the data loading that's there already. And we're updating the manual and the, the help pages. So if anyone's looked at the Transmart help, it's been rather dated because it hasn't really been updated since the open source release went out. Next slide, please. OK, so the code cleanup group. Transmart's written in Grails, which means there are a bunch of languages under the hood. Um, groovy Java, JavaScript, database um, definitions. And in Transmart 1.0, the first open source release, up to the latest one, everything used a rather old version of Grails, Grails 2.3. It uses Java 7, which is obsolete and has disappeared from some systems. Uh, multiple versions of the JavaScript libraries were in use. That all needed a cleanup. So the Harvard guys upgraded it to Java 2.5, uh, sorry, to Grails 2.5, which uses Java 8, which is much better. To get to Java 10 or 11, we have to upgrade to Grails 4, which isn't out yet. And so a future release of uh, Transmart will move to Grails 4. Um, but in fact, most of the work we're doing in Transmart 19 is what you need to go to Grails 4. So there should not be too much extra effort needed to make that step. Um, all the JavaScript code is reorganized. We use something called the Asset Pipeline plugin, which means everything is in one place. Um, you have to change the references to every bit of JavaScript all through the code, but that's you can standardize. A uh, single location for all the scripts, all the style sheets, and all the images. So we're doing a lot of testing to make sure that everything's in the right place and still presents itself in the right way. And the database table definitions, we've compared to the I2B2 database as well as the version of the database that was in use at Harvard 
And so the database now is compatible with I2B2. You could, in theory, load a Transmart database and run I2B2 on it because you'll have all the I2B2 tables. You'll just have some extra tables that are there for Transmart. Next slide. Okay, on Postgres, we're supporting um, Postgres 10 and 11 as well as Postgres 9, which we were supporting before and testing on all of those. We're still using the standard Postgres database that we had before, but we have the option now to use the table partitioning in Postgres. So for loading expression data, um, a lot of extra work went into previous versions to make it work in Postgres. And Postgres 10 to 11 now support partition tables. So we will experiment with those in a future release. And we'd like some volunteers to test that if anyone has enough data to try. Um, it'll be much simpler to maintain it in parallel with the Oracle code from that point onwards. And we also have to look at whether everyone in industry is using Postgres 10 to 11 yet. Next slide. So the database stored procedures, um, there are procedures that load data, expression data, clinical data into the tables. Um, those hadn't been touched for a long time. So we've going through doing a code cleanup on those. We found some performance improvements, notably in loading RNA-seq data, which is much faster now. Um, bug fixes, we've been testing all the data types to check that everything works. Some of the error messages were not exactly correct, uh, so they've been updated. Um, so some of them didn't quite tell you what was wrong when, uh, when the system failed and you had to do a lot more detective work in support to figure out what had happened. And the return codes tended to be minus 16, which is not very helpful. So we'll try to, to make the return code tell you exactly where it failed. And then when you ask for support, it'll be much easier to work out which step it was on when something went wrong. Uh, there are also some utilities in there to manage the database. And looking through that, it turns out that some of those were only written for Oracle and have clearly never been used on Postgres. So we're going to make sure that those will work and we'll document what they do because some of them are actually quite useful. They list what you have in the database in various useful ways and encourage database administrators and data managers to use those to keep a, a watch on what data they have loaded and whether it's loaded correctly. Next slide, Rudy. Okay, we're going to support Ubuntu 18, which is Ubuntu produces a major release every two years. So we've been supporting Ubuntu 16 up to now. Um, this version is being tested on Ubuntu 16 and 18 and tested using Postgres and Oracle. There are um, some install scripts that come with Transmart, which will install it automatically, tries to find everything you need to do on a, a clean Ubuntu system for Ubuntu 18. And we're going to test it on Ubuntu 16 as well and make sure that uh, everything appears in the right place there. Uh, it installs all the required software um, Tomcat server and everything else creates the database for you and populates it with basic information about genes and uh, expression platforms, etc. Configures Transmart and configures the data loading procedures and runs some tests on the basic functionality to check that everything's working and the Transmart comes up. We're looking to build modified scripts for alternative systems, but we need people who've got those systems to test them for us. Um, so it's been run on Fedora. Uh, we know it works on Fedora. It should work perfectly well on Red Hat and CentOS, but we need to set up those systems and run tests and we can update the install scripts. And if anyone would like to help test those, we'd be very happy to help you to run through the test scripts and check that everything uh, loads correctly. Next. So one of the things that we added in the previous release, Transmart 16, and we've updated it for this release. Uh, when you set up Transmart and you configure it, it's often been an issue of, have you got the configuration correct? You set it up um, with the components of Transmart that you want to see. You set it up with how those are supposed to work. There are some details needed to contact external servers for some of the uh, features. And so what this page does, it's on the admin page. If you log in as administrator, go to the admin page in Transmart and look at configuration status. It reports every configuration parameter that you have. And so you can see here some um, general administration options, directories for storing things. If you've uh, 
overridden them where some of the external servers are. And then next slide. At the very end of this page, there's a section called unknown. So if you have um, any other configuration parameters, there's one there that wasn't in 16.3, but is actually going to be in Transmart 19, the project URL. So you can see any others that you've defined down there that haven't been used. And uh, you can correct the, the parameter. It's normally the name is not quite right. So that way you can initially check that your configuration is correct. And then if you need support, you can send what your configuration parameters are for, for various things. And it's much easier then in providing support to know what the settings were and where it's going to be looking for things. We can get you to check that the temporary directories that you're writing things to are correctly set up, have the correct ownership, and Transmart can see them. Next slide. So on the data loading, um, ever since Transmart first went open source, it's been using um, Kettle or Pentaho data integration, which is an open source data loading suite. Um, but it's been using version 4.4, .4, which is really obviously six years old at least. Uh, and that's been updated to the latest version of Kettle for this release. Uh, we're also updating the um, TM data loader, which was originally from Thomson Reuters, they're now Clarivate. And there's another data loader called Transmart Batch from the Hive, which um, talks directly to the database and speeds some operations up. Uh, for the Kettle, which is the default data loading, we're extending the, the logging and debugging messages. So one thing it never told you before was which version of Kettle it's actually used. It now tells you that. I know some sites have been using Kettle 5 and having issues. We've uh, fixed those. And we're adding, there, there are a set of ETL targets uh, data loading targets in the Transmart data package, which is what creates the database. Um, so you can do load clinical on the name of the study, uh, load ref annotation and load annotation, loads up, um, express um, microarray or RNA-seq platforms, and then load expression on the name of the study, load RNA-seq on the name of the study, etc. load up the higher dimensional data for the study automatically. And there are public servers where you can just set up the public server, download the, the set of available data, uh, just the definitions, and then each of these targets will fetch the data as you need it, load it into Transmart, and report uh, success. Next slide. So that's the basic data loading that you had. You could load the clinical data, and you can load expression data, RNA-seq data, and other, other data types. Um, we have some scripts we've had for some time that you could just run as one-offs to load metadata in the Browse tab um, or to load um, sample data for the Sample Explorer features in uh, Transmart. And we could also have scripts that load gene signature lists. So when you load a study, the public publication for the study normally has a list of genes that were found to be significant. And you can take that list and put it into your analyses and just analyze those genes in particular. So we're going to put those scripts into to make targets. And we can then provide you, for each of the, the 200 or so studies that are on the current public server, we could give you um, an overview of the study to load on that front welcome page. We can also try to pick up sample metadata, although there's very little of it for a lot of these geo studies. Um, and we can certainly look for the gene signatures and gene lists and pick those up for those studies and uh, make them available. And if anybody has a particular interest in curating those with us, We'd be very happy for help. Um, I'd also like to add some of those scripts that do summary reports of what data is loaded and have a, a target that lets you just load a report for a study and report what's actually been loaded, number of um, individuals and samples, and the data types that you've loaded with it, and some descriptions of the, the data. So we should be able to add those. Um, and add some extra documentation on that, which will make it much easier for data managers to keep track of what data they've got in the system. Next slide. So we've had a few bug fixes. That should say bug fixes to 16.3. <laughs> we've changed um, the color on the, the summary statistics. We've improved some of the, uh, the text in the Again, in the summary statistics, some of the summary text wasn't uh, quite correct. 
And we've improved the reports for missing data. So for example, there was an error message that said, you can't see any statistics because subsets one and two are the same. Um, what it really meant was for the data you're looking at, subsets one and two are both empty. And it's much more useful to know that they're empty than to know that they're the same. So some extra checks have been put in there. We fixed some issues with drag and drop in some of the browsers and uh, we're going to be doing more of that as we go through testing everything with all the code changes. Um, yeah, and some other some other basic bug fixes. Next slide. Yeah, a common issue with Transmart is that um, the R packages need to be updated on a regular basis. So if you install Transmart, uh, we're forever watching for changes to the R packages and updating the definitions and updating the database building that goes with it. Um, we're hoping to provide a something like a Docker instance for the R server to simplify that. So you can just get one that everything is built in automatically. And there was an issue in this release with um, the R server because you have to download a, an updated version of the R server from somewhere else. The official one has a bug that makes it incompatible and gives error messages when you run some of the jobs. So as I say, we'll try to provide an R server that you can just download and use to simplify that. But for now, we're updating all of the definitions. Next. So we have a lot of curated data sets available from this uh, library.transmartfoundation.org server. Uh, there's one single script that um, will load up the study and all of the other data. So you can just download that script and it basically runs a series of makes to load the clinical data, to load the annotation platforms, and then to load expression data, RNA-seq, etc. There are some hundred study geo data sets from the eTrix project that were added recently. And there are some cancer data sets curated by Merck and by other sites. Um, always welcome to have any more curated data sets. If you have any studies that you have curated that can be made publicly available, we would love to have them. There's a, a wiki page for the Transmont Foundation, which is not currently working. Um, they've got a, a small issue with some of their sites, um, but that link should be working again soon. And you can also go to the Axiomedic support site, which I'll come on to in a moment, and look at available data sets, and the same list is available there. Next slide. And if you want the links from these slides, all the slides will be available after the, the talk. They will be put up on the um, foundation website. Um, so we're updating the installation scripts for Ubuntu 18, installing all the software, configuring everything, testing everything. We'll also test that it works on Ubuntu 16. And I think I mentioned these, these points earlier. We'd like some testers for the alternative systems if we can find them. Haven't had much luck so far finding people to test the installation on uh, other systems. Next slide. So we started testing uh, last month. We have a server with data loaded up. We're working through the, the various features and testing them all and doing some code cleanup as we go. Um, so there's a major effort in testing absolutely everything. We can't just say that basics are working, we have to make sure that all the details are right and looking in, uh, in various places to see if any error messages are lurking. Um, once we've been through those, we'll have a set of tests we'd like to run every time. So we will automate those and then for future releases, we'll have a set of things that we, we use to test every feature of Transmart, be able to use that through development and it can be much easier to get releases out. But unfortunately for this release, it'll all have to be done by hand. Um, but it will be the most thoroughly tested Transmart release to date. Next slide. So you can issue, send bug reports to this uh, JIRA site, which is currently has the same problem as the other sites. Um, but you can send support emails to the, the Transmart Foundation's support list. Um, that will get to the developers who will uh, do their best to respond. But also at Axiomedics, we have a professional support service. So um, you can go for free to transmart support axiomedics.com. You can look at the web content, um, the documentation and some various help articles about Transmart and about I2B2 and the other platforms. Um, we also have documentation that we're building there for developers, for database administrators and data loaders and curators. 
and for system administrators loading the packages. Um, and if you go to the general site, supportaximedics.com, you get a choice of the three platforms to go to. Next slide. So this is our interest at Axiomedics, is to provide the support for uh, users of all three platforms. So the support site is um, as Zendesk running in the background. You don't need any login to access the public pages, so pretty much all of the content is available to everybody. Um, if you want to register support tickets, you have to become a registered user and set yourself up with support from Axiomedics, and then we will do our best to um, give you immediate support when you create a ticket. Uh, submit a request is the option on the support platform. But just browsing, if you click on any of the platforms, you'll get, make your way through the documentation in the knowledge library. We also are setting up the Axiomedics expert network so you can contact a set of uh, expert developers and support staff, and we can work you with you on projects to build uh, what you need into your platform or to provide you supported platforms or you can dream up projects and just contact us and let us know. We're very, very happy to work with you and help you. Next slide. So this is the, the support page for Transmart. You can just click through onto any of the, the documentation. User manual is there, so you can just browse the user manual here and documentation for administrators, developers, etc. Next slide. Yeah, so we have the full Transmart manual available here. Um, the 16.2 version is available from some other servers, but the 16.3 is is here, and we're going to um, add the Transmart 19 server, and it'll become the, the standard help for Transmart 19. So we'll be able to read it in the platform as well. Next slide. Yeah, so if you go into the manual and go into, say, SmartR, you get the list of the current workflows that are available in SmartR. You can then go down to, to click on one of these. So next slide. So you look at the, the box plot workflow. It gives you documentation of, of what it requires that inputs, how to handle them, and tries to talk you through um, the various steps to get a workflow to run. Next slide. And so here are the, the results. And it gives you some information about what you can do zooming in and out. Okay, next slide. So yeah, at the end, we have links to the, the original source code. Um, so this page is still linking to the 16.3 source code. When everything's updated for 19, that we'll just update that link to link to the Trans Transmart 19 documentation. So we'll update all the images and add the new features. Uh, for further support, all the curated content, all the articles in the Knowledge Library are, are free to anyone to access. Uh, includes the documentation, troubleshooting guides, some tutorials, uh, we link out also to all of these training courses that the foundation runs uh, with descriptions. So you can use that as a route to get to um, all these recordings and slides. Link to the various data sources and links to resources for administrators and developers. If you uh, register with us, you can submit support requests and get direct support by email or by phone or whatever you need. And there's a community discussion board, which you can uh, sign in for free and then contribute to the discussion board. And that might be also a way to, for example, submit feature requests, things that you'd like to see in Transmart, and get some feedback on whether they're uh, good ideas, whether they're easy to do. Or, yeah, sometimes they might say, it's very interesting, would you like to develop it? But quite often, um, ideas from the community are things that we'd really like to do. We just need to know that there's a user there who'd like to use them and you then become the first ones to test the results. And there's an email address there to contact us and the main website to find out more about Axiomedics and what we do. And the next slide. 
yes, so Transmart 19 is due out um, fairly soon, probably in August. So give us another six weeks or so to to carry on testing everything. Um, we'll have a Postgres demo server when it comes up. So currently it's the 16.3 demo server. We'll just update that as soon as the Transmart 19 is released and there'll be a server you can go and try to check the new features out. Um, release will be made as usual. A uh, link will appear on the, the library server, which currently gives you 16.3, 16.2, 16.1. So we'll add Transmart 19 to the top of that with a guide to how to do the installation. And uh, next slide. So these are the things that you'd need to, to pick up when you install. You get the WAR file, which is Transmart itself. That's what actually runs um, with the interface. Um, Transmart Batch is a data loading utility. Transmart Data builds the database for you, configures Transmart, builds the R server, and loads up data. Uh, Transmart ETL is a set of is the kettle scripts that are involved in uh, loading data, and there's a dictionary loader that you can update the genes and other information. Um, Guava is um, analytical graphics for the GWAS, should you use the GWAS functions. There are the install scripts, and there's the documentation. Um, you used to be able to get the Thomson Reuters data loader, but we're going to integrate that directly into Transmart. It'll be part of the release. Uh, so there won't be any need to install that separately. You'll have the choice of using TM Data Loader to load uh, studies. And we'll give you a, a simple description of how to load these things. Um, the scripts basically take each of these. You download the scripts and the scripts bring the others across and load everything for you. Next slide. Yeah, just to acknowledge the contributors to Release 19, so staff at Axia Medics, the guys at Harvard Medical School who did a lot of the, the work in porting their Transmart version into this release, the guys at Clarivate who look after the TM data loader and are also involved in the, the product management committee and the testing, and the folk at the ITB2 Transmart Foundation who bring everything together. So thanks very much to all of those. I think that was the last slide. Yeah, so if there are any questions, these are the, the links to the Axiomedics support site and the knowledge database and link to the Axiomedics expert network. Okay, thanks, Peter. Um, I'm sure if there's any questions, um, you can raise your hand or type something into the question window. I see, I see there was a question saying, I tried to install Transmart and installation is quite a mess. Yes, the, the scripts to install it should make that much simpler. So they do their best to find which components you're missing and to install them. If you're not using Ubuntu 18, we're very happy to work with you to get the scripts cleaned up for other versions. Installing okay. the database is normally not too difficult. Installing R can be take, can take quite a while. That's the one that I don't like very much. So I'd really like to to be able to set up an R server and just use that as the R server for Transmart. That would simplify things a lot. But I think you'll find that loading the database and loading studies into the database would not be too bad to do and setting up and installing the Transmart server itself should be straightforward. It's the R server that's used for some of the analyses that can be complicated. Yeah, asking about information in different places, I recommend using the, uh, the Axiomedics support site because that's the most recently updated. We're looking at getting some information out of the Transmart Wiki as well and updating that because that has been getting out of date. It's been quite hard to, to keep that up to date with the various releases. So if you have a look through the Axiomedic support site, let us know if there are any gaps because there are some articles that we have on the, the list to be created. Um, 
we've been concentrating at the moment on writing things for developers to go with the new release, but we have a set of uh, user documentation we'd like to update as well. And we're very happy if, if someone is willing to look at look through it to provide those and uh, in return, you can help by proofreading and telling us if it's all clear, if there's anything else we need to do. And okay. if you need any further help, if you email the Axiomedics address or even the support transportfoundation.org address, um, it will come to me. <laughs> I'll be one of the likely people to answer. Ah, looking for the REST API. Yes, the REST API is, is in Transmart and there's a, um, a REST API um, package that you can install, which contacts it. It's fairly simple. It talks to Transmart gets a token back and then it can download studies and then you can use that to analyze data. Um, I should have had that in the list of things that you install. It should have been on that slide. And if you look through the code for the REST API, you can actually write um, downloads in most languages. It's relatively simple protocol. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, thank you, Peter. Um, as we said, this will be this recording will be available shortly, and, and the slide deck will be posted um, quite quickly. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. To, uh, yeah, the next training sessions. Thanks, Peter. And good questions.